readers, reviewers, countrymen. Welcome to the new setup. Hello and welcome back to the channel as we record our first proper video in this new setup. If you didn't catch it, we did do a video doing Ed's bookshelf tour yes, and that incorporated not only the the tour from it, the expert tour of every single shelf he's expert got, on but also level. us actually putting the books on the shelves because you've recently moved, haven't you, Ed? Yeah, moved in with my girlfriend, so we are now adults, I yes. guess. Are and you fighting over the shelves? Not, not yet. Not There's yet. free space. We probably so, will be, yes. as we have free space for now. But uh, yeah, go check out the bookshelf tour video, which lots of people were asking for. Uh, and here today, we're going to be talking about standalones that we want to read in the year of 2023. 2022 was an amazing year of reading. We hit new heights with our reading, didn't we? We did. Some setting records for ourselves. And yeah. now we would love to read much more standalones. So uh, we thought we'd compile a little list here for our, our viewers today. Yes, this will be a two-part video. This one is talking about 2023 reading plans, standalones, and then hopefully we'll do another video, which is about 2023 reading plans regarding series. series. But as I said, and as Ed said, today is about standalones. So I will kick it off with The Once and Future King. I guess there's a bit of an argument here that this should be in the series category because this is five shortish stories put together to form one book. And I have to read this. It is Arthurian legend and is by T.H. White. The Once and Future King is many people's fate, one of their favourite Arthurian retellings. Mm -hmm. And I believe one of the first stories is where they got the sword and the stone, the Disney film from. Oh, crazy film. So, yeah. of course, this is going to be amazing. I love Arthurian legend. I'm obsessed with it. And it is a, a terrible. I feel like a, a fake that I haven't read this yet. So, yeah, that is The Once and Future King by T.H. White. Let me know if you've read it down in the comments below. Yeah, and if you haven't read it, then probably you're not allowed in the Arthurian circles anymore. No. no you can't go to Stonehenge ever again. Forget Mallory. <laughs> you've got to read T.H. You've got to White. Read T. H. White. And the first one for me, then, is a fantasy recommendation by none other than Petrick at Petrick Reads. Patrick Leo, one of our good friends over here on Booktube. And we've known him long before either of us were doing channels. He's a great supporter of Papa Gwyn's books. He loves Faith in the Fallen. So definitely go check out his channel, which I'm sure you all do. Um, so our, my first recommendation is Heroes Die by Matthew Stover. Now this is a darkish fantasy with some um, a, a heroic approach. Uh, what, that's what I've heard anyway. I don't know too much about the plot in terms of that, but I know that Friends Talking Fantasy, uh, Dylan and Charles also love this book, even though the cover is pretty shocking. So I'm really looking forward to reading it. I've heard some amazing reviews and it sounds like an awesome standalone. And next up, I have Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. This blew onto the the Greek retelling scene a few years ago, I think 2021. Maybe 2022. In a godlike push, way. In a godlike way. Mm. In an Achilles fleet-footed way. Nice. And so Ariadne, of course, I have to read it. It's known as one of the best Greek retellings. I absolutely love mythological retellings. Sometimes they can come across a bit dry because, say, they're an Arthurian retelling mm -hmm. or a... Trojan retelling yeah. stories that we've had many times before, but Ariadne focusing on a bit of Greek myth that isn't discussed as much. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading this and joining so many others on that bandwagon of loving Ariadne. And it could be The Groat, which is greatest retelling of all time. Nicely done, Ed. Thank you. And the first historical fiction for me is going to be by Dorothy Dunnett, and this is called King Hereafter. And this is essentially... It's a big book. It's essentially the tale of the real Macbeth. Um, and I've heard it's absolutely amazing. It's set in the Viking Age, uh, I think in the islands of Scotland. So the Orkney Isles, the Shetland Isles, that kind of thing. Um, and it is the 11th century, so obviously it's going to be right up my street. It's an epic, um, it's a huge chunk of book, which we definitely need more of. And as a standalone, I just know I'm going to connect with the characters. I feel like standalones, they've got this, you know, they're, they're allowed to be a lot longer than shorter books to yeah. allow, you know, your investment really. <laughs> series, <laughs> series, you can, you know, put them all together and the page count is quite high with three books. But uh, with a standalone, I love having a big, thick standalone because it means I just know I'm going to be able to connect with the characters and really get behind them and see exactly what goes on in their lives. Hopefully there's some slice of life stuffs because I really enjoyed slice of life um, books really I always love that that's kind of up my street I reckon yeah. but King Hereafter is a book that uh, if I don't read then I won't be allowed to be a Viking anymore 
No, I that is categorical. Cool. That is one of the roles. I have some historical fiction, and that is Shogun by James Clavell. And you won't be able to visit Japan if you don't. If I don't this. read this, uh, but Shogun is known as one of the greatest historical fiction books out there, and it's one of your favourite books ever, and mm-hmm. it's one of Papa Gwyn's favourite books. I asked him recently, what book do you think you've reread the most other than Lord of the Rings? And he said Shogun yeah. because he read it so many times when he, he read was it younger. <laughs> yeah. He read it so, so many times when he was younger. Mm-hmm. And so of course it's a book he loves and I'm hoping to be the third member of the Gwyn family too. I'm going to say it again, jump on that bandwagon. Yeah. And there's no wagons in Shogun so jump on that. Mm. Horse. We'll say horse. We'll say horse. Or boat. Boat. Lots of boats. Are there? Yeah. Lots of boats. Lots of boats. <laughs> Lots of boats. I know, yeah. Sorry to... People who don't like water? No, they're not actually on water, though. They're like landed boats. So don't worry. <laughs> if you don't like... What's the word for um, books when it's in the water? Uh, desecration. <laughs> Whoa. Not books in the water. I meant books when they're set like on the water. Like oh! Books. Desecration. <laughs> Nautical. Nautical, that's it. Right. Yeah, very nautical. Anyway, let's stick with the, uh, the, the Japanese theme. And here I have Taiko by Eiji Yoshikawa. And this is an... A pretty big I think it's about 900 pages this book actually yeah it's got like Bible paper it's very very thin pages but this is about uh, I believe you were Seki Kenshin and uh, and the fight between three different shoguns in the 16th century the Sengoku Jidai period um, so I'm really looking forward to this I've heard that Eiji Yoshikawa also wrote a standalone on Miyamoto Masashi which I also actually have a tattoo of so I should read that at some point but I've chosen Taiko because it has this a tattoo of Miyamoto Masashi not on the book yeah I've got not the book not yeah i'm not doing the book i'm yeah, not reading the book but yeah, yeah an art uh, some art of the character the person the man the samurai the not the myth because he was real legend possibly amen um so yeah taiko i chose this over me over masashi by eiji yoshikawa because this has that kind of military aspect in terms of the epic scale uh from what i've heard anyway so i'm looking forward to reading it i haven't i haven't seen many reviews here on booktube of any eiji yoshikawa work so i think uh, i think it'd be really good and it'd be interesting to read uh something set in japan by someone who is from Japan as well, as opposed to obviously Shogun written by James Clavell. Um, it'd be interesting to see what someone's take is from their own culture. So I'm looking forward to reading this. Very nice. And next up, I have a classic, and that is Shogun by Bram Stoker. Somehow I've never read this, but I love the Gothic. And also, I know a bit of the history of Dracula, how kind of this archetype of the the handsome vampire came about because it came about from a story by the poet Byron. He told a short story um, on a very windy night to those around him, including the writer of Frankenstein, Mary Shelley. And he told a story where at the time the trope for vampires was to be basically zombies, skin Mm -hmm. hanging off. Uh, And he changed it to be based on himself. He was a bit (laughs) egotistical. uh, To change it to being himself a handsome man, um, a vampire who... It presents a threat in a very different way. And so, yeah, I know a bit of a history, but I've never read Dracula, which is terrible. Yeah. Just a lot of these books are rectifying that mistakes actually of past a world. sin, especially if you're from the north of England. Exactly. You can't go to Whitby. Yeah, luckily I'm not from the north of England. <laughs> I'm all about banning you from Yeah, you are. What, what is it? You're just slowly going to get it a yeah. smaller and smaller zone. But yeah, yeah that is Dracula. <laughs> really looking forward to reading it. Another historical fiction book I would like to read is Aztec by Gary Jennings. Uh, obviously, you know that I'm interested in that period of America, um, and especially when the Spanish invaded as well. I find it fascinating. Uh, and I don't know too much about the Mesoamerican cultures, so I think Aztec will be an interesting read for me. It's quite an epic uh, historical fiction. It's quite a big book as well. It's about 800 pages. And I've heard some amazing things about Gary Jennings' writing uh, from people on Booktube. So I'm really interested to get to grips with that and read about something that is a very different culture to what I'm used to reading as well. Um, and I think uh, I teach the Maya uh, at school uh, to my class and it is I always find it so fascinating uh, when we dive into that. The kids absolutely love that topic. It is it is just full of these amazing, vibrant details that we you know we don't really pick up on much. We don't really know. It's not common knowledge today. And if you look at, you know, you look at pictures of... Um, you know the the monuments in Mexico and other areas of Central America. They look absolutely beautiful and breathtaking. So uh, I hopefully Aztec will be the same. Very nice. So that sounds very interesting. Next up, I have a Western, and that is Lonesome Dove. A Western. By who's that by Ed? Mm, Larry McMurtry. One of your favourite authors, by uh, chance? Um. Hmm. Yes. Very nice. And uh, <laughs> over on Matt's Fancy Reviews, he recently read Lonesome Dove and said it's his second favourite book 
of all time. Hang on. Why is this in the standalones category? Because it was a recent... Oh, I've oh, made a mistake. Made but the mistake. thing is, it was a re- It was originally released as a standalone. It was originally released as a standalone. So I, I, say, I may just read this as a standalone and not read the others. Don't look at me like that, but it's, it's possible because it just is. It just is because I've got some other westerns. Do you want me to read The Sun? Don't you? You would rather, you'd you'd rather read The Others. <laughs> there is another western I'm mentioning today. And also The Sun. Who's that one? Philip Meyer. Who I also, which I also want to read. So I've got a few westerns there. But Alone from Dove, yes. I suppose it read could be it in Read it and find out. No, read so it this was one if you want to. That could have gone in both, but um, I totally didn't just forget it was in a series. But um, we'll say that I decided to put it in the standalones because it's not definite I'll read it as a series. I think Larry McMurtry's writing, he can be a bit self-indulgent sometimes, but I think it's absolutely fantastic. McMurtry is a great writer. And I absolutely love books one and two. So some people don't really like to read those or they like to read Rose from Dove mm. first, but I absolutely love the first two books. And the next one for me is On the Road by Jack Kerouac. This is meant to be a seminal text work of fiction uh, that is a classic for a reason. And I haven't read it yet, but I'm really looking forward to reading it. Apparently it changes everyone's life. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Be prepared. Um, but it's, yeah. Pardon? Be prepared. Be prepared to have my life changed. So uh, On the Road is about uh, the underground of America, talking about um, jazz and music and people growing up and that kind of thing. Um, and that is as much as I know, but uh, because it's such an important book that so many people have loved and adored and recommended, I thought I really have to try it this year. And last up for me, I have True Grit and I'm borrowing Ed's slipcase edition here. I won't actually read from it. Uh, but yeah, this is a beautiful I edition read from it of myself. True Grit. And yeah, we love both films, don't we? The old one and the new one with Matt Damon. And who's, who else? Jeff Bridger. Jeff Bridger. Bridges. Bridges. <laughs> Bridger. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> I really funny, love uh, True Grit <laughs> and it's a fantastic book. So yeah, I really want to read it. And True that... Grit is the, an easy Western to read. Here we go, got some beautiful art there. But True Grit is fantastic. It's a really easy Western to read. The prose is amazing and the characters are fantastic. And the last one for me is Moby Dick by Herman Myville. And, uh, you know, this is a book that needs no introductions. Uh, it is told, well, it feels a little bit like a gothic book, apparently. And uh, it's an inspiration for so many authors. Including Cormac McCarthy. Including Blood Cormac Meridian. McCarthy, which is why I am reading it. I think there's lots of parallels between Blood Meridian and Moby Dick. The kind of, um, the chase, the humans, you know, really pushing themselves to Two the central characters as well, be. I believe. Okay, thank you. Is that similar to Blood Meridian? I think one of them... Um, the I, I can't the say spoilers. Kid and the Judge. No, no, no. no it's um, somewhere else. It's spoilers. So I'd, uh, I'll talk to you about it afterwards. The Whale is obviously a very important <laughs> yeah. character. But I've never read this and I really, really want to. I know that um, I flicked through it before and it feels just like a monumental book that you're reading. It feels like a masterpiece, um, which is exactly what most people say it is. So uh, it's a classic for a reason. And yeah, I definitely want to read many, many more classics this year. Very nice. And that is all the books we're talking about today. There's some standalones we're planning to read in 2023. Hopefully we get through a few more books than just these. But these are the priorities. So mm-hmm. thank you so much for watching. Let us know what standalones you've got as priorities for 2023. Have you yeah. read any of these? Have you got any books that are similar to these? And Please also, let us know. Yeah, also, there's not enough fantasy standalones, are there? Now, you know, can please recommend I us I should have somewhat. had Sword of Kagan on my list. You should have had Sword of Kagan, definitely. Just don't recommend Guy Gabriel K. Ed's not a fan. I maybe, might try maybe to you, Maybe you, you could try to garner. Yeah, maybe I will. But everyone, thank you so much for watching. Truth and Courage, the Brothers Gwyn. Truth and Courage from the Brothers Gwyn. Oh, hiccups. Oh, hiccups. Thank you.